From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. Hello, Roger. Hello, Peter. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's been a yeah. while, hasn't it? Yes, it has. I'm still teaching, as you know, and I get lots of questions. And one question I got quite often recently is about prepositions, because... It, oh. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. You've been teaching longer than I have. And um, basically what students ask is, oh, my God, how do you learn them? Yeah. And with a kind of a doubtful voice, is there any kind of system behind all this yeah. in prepositions? Well, is there? Well, it's funny you should ask that, because when I was regularly teaching a grammar course, yes. and I allowed students to suggest topics, you could mm -hmm. guarantee every term that people would want help with prepositions. And nearly every time I had to say, this isn't really a matter for grammar, this is a matter for vocabulary, and you have to learn them. Which uh, doesn't sound very helpful, but in the end, it's yeah. pretty well the truth, isn't it? So there's no system at all? I wouldn't say that. I think there's some kind of logic behind it, because we... Human beings try to be logical, don't we? Uh -huh, uh -huh. So what's the logic? I think, first of all, you need to see where prepositions came from. If you can imagine when people started to speak, then the most important thing was to talk about where they were living, whether it was in the forest or on the steps or whatever. So these uh -huh. prepositions like in and on would be very important. So spatial Spatial expressions, yeah. Expressions. So, yeah, that's what kids start with as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. inside the house, outside. Exactly. That's something that is important for them. And then I think the second step is probably to use these same prepositions to talk about time. Uh -huh. So you say uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, just as you say in the house and in the room. It's kind of a, mm -hmm. the idea of a container that's very important. Container. Yeah, it's like you're in a box or you're in yes. some kind of container, uh -huh. which is clear enough if you're in a room in the house. Yeah. But then we say in the afternoon, in the morning. With so you would consider um, a time of day or a, a part of the day as a container. Yeah, the morning, kind of, morning yeah. would be a container like a cup that you're right. inside <laughs> of. And then comes the second cup, the afternoon, mm. and you're inside of that. Yeah. Or box. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I get that. I think similar things probably work in other languages. But but how about on Monday then? I think there you're treating um, some extra. Well, if you think about on the roof, yeah. if you go back to space. Right. Then it's not a container; it's a surface. Right. You're so on you're, top you're, you're of si something. You're sitting or standing on top of something. Uh huh. So I would think probably like on Monday you're seeing you're seeing the days of the week like on a calendar. You can see it as a surface. Uh huh. I, at least that's it's plausible if if it's the correct explanation. Who can know? But yeah, but but the idea would be then okay. So so you have this I don't know meeting sitting on top of your yeah your day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I sometimes get that feeling with meetings. <laughs> <laughs> They sit on top of my day. <laughs> then maybe the next stage would be a kind of figurative expressions that is not literally yes. in a container, but seeing something like mm -hmm. like your head as a container. I mean, strictly okay. speaking, it isn't. I mean, it's not an empty There thing. There may be people, <laughs> people who doubt that it contains a lot, but okay, go on. And then you can say things like, in my opinion. Uh-huh, yeah. okay. Or you can say something is on my mind, where it's kind of like a burden almost. On that is, of, yeah, that makes, yeah. That makes sense. So uh, I think, although this is not very helpful to a learner, at least it shows mm -hmm. that there is, it's not total chaos here. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. And but but now you you said things about um, prepositional phrases, as they call them. Yeah. What about verbs? Yeah. Well, of course, there are lots of combinations of verb and preposition, or some other little word. Uh, I think adjectives this, and prepositions. This is where it gets very difficult for learners because so much of that seems completely unpredictable. Uh huh. If you start with the uh, more central ones, let's stay in tonight, uh -huh. and you can see in. Still uh -huh. keeps some kind of a right. spatial sense, or let's go out. Right now, these are these are easy to understand, but lots of others, it's uh, uh -huh. you know, like um, they're they're really idiomatic in the end. That is, they're not. So you have to learn them as like phrases, a piece of, as as chunks, as chunks. Yeah. Right. There, there are a few difficult ones. Um, the one, for example, that that really got to me for a long time is to be guilty of something. Yeah. 
or um, um, or there's there's even changing prepositions. For example, you can die from something, mm-hmm. and you can die off something. Hmm. Is is there any logic when you say from die from die off? I think probably this is not the place to look for logic. Much more for habits, customs of speech, especially with of of. I don't even want to get into that because of is the most frequent preposition in English by far uh-huh. and is used in so many different ways. So we shall not speak of this <laughs> okay. on the air. Um, I got one more for you, though. Yeah. Um, um, the In the street, on the street, there seems to be both, and it doesn't really make sense to me. I think, well, in the street is typically British. And I think in British towns and cities, you do see streets as containers. That uh-huh. is, there's... This is something I would like to explore in a yeah. next podcast, because I, I know more, uh, I think on the street would be more frequent. Right. right. Which means said. Americans are not seeing it as a container, but as a surface. Okay. We'll talk about that next time, okay, yeah. why this is so. Yeah. Okay? Fine. Okay. Bye, dear listeners. Bye, Bye Roger. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.